Hello and welcome to the Drought Severity Evaluation Tool Case Study 3 exercise. In this case study, we will be looking at wildfires and climate sensitivity of meadows. Prior to going through this exercise, you have the option to download the entire user guide that is attached as a PDF to the DSET webpage to follow along step-by-step -step through this exercise. You also have the option to click on the link to download this case study application as a segment focusing specifically on case study three at the DSET website as well. In this case study, we will be using two types of data sets. The first will be the MODIS Terra Daily, and the second will be Landsat data, looking at surface reflectance. There will be two variables that will be used in this analysis for case study three, which are the burned area index, otherwise known in reference as BAI, and the normalized difference vegetation index that will be referred to as NDVI. In this case study, we will be looking at meadows on the Navajo Nation and seeing the impact of a particular wildfire that occurred in 2014 that is referred to as the Asai Lake Fire. If you are following along in the material that has been prepared for you in the user guide, you will notice that there are a couple of helpful tips to help you go through this exercise that are listed there in bullet form. The first is that if you are working on Google Chrome, this is where DSET is optimized to perform. So please, if you're not using Chrome, please switch to Chrome capability to move forward with this exercise just to help optimize the experience with DSET. Also, a faster network is preferred when using DSET. And when we are working with larger data sets, it is better to zoom into areas to not have so many variables to be calculated and zooming in will help with that. If at any time during this tutorial, if you come across any server errors or timeout errors, you have the option to reset DSET. And that the reset for DSET is in this area here, where you see my cursor circling on the screen. This case study is split up into three sections. The first looking at the variable of the burned area index. The second will be a comparison of time series, looking at the burn area index and the NDVI values during this time of the Asaya Lake fire. And the third part of this case study will be looking at the NDVI percent difference of average values, which will help us see the restorations of meadow areas after experiencing a wildfire. So let's go ahead and begin the first part of case study three. Part one looks at the Asaya Lake Fire Burned Area Index. And this objective, we aim to identify the burned scar area of the Asaya Lake Fire in the Cheska Mountains. So here you see the DSET interface. And by clicking on the, the climateengine.org link on the documents that were presented to you in helping you move through the user guide to gain a better understanding of the set, this is the home page that you will be brought to. So this is a fresh face that you're looking at. Here in this section where my mouse is moving on the left-hand screen, you have a make map and a make graph option. So this is where you will enter the variables for the parameters you are interested in while working through this case study. There are also a number of other features to help with the aesthetics of the mapping and the time series you create, as well as the option to help you zoom in and out of the data sets that you are looking at with the maps you are creating. And as we move through this case study, we will be able to further see what other tools are available and features are available in DSET to help you understand and answer a lot of other questions you may have outside of the case studies we are presenting to you. But for this case study, what we are going to do now is begin to look for the burn scar area for the Asaya Lake fire. So if, if you're looking and following along with me in the documents that were presented with you, you'll notice various figures throughout the document, which are labeled with steps to be able to help you identify the features that are associated with each step. So for step two, we are looking at changing the layers to display the Navajo chapters. And so the Navajo Nation chapters on display are already there as a default, but you can turn on and off these layers to your liking. 
But for this case study, we'll go ahead and leave the Navajo Nation chapters on. Now, according to step three, we're going to change our base map. And so this is where you're able to change the base maps for your map options that are available in DSET. And for this particular case study, we're interested in turning it to the light political style mapping. And so here we have the option now to zoom in a little bit closer to the Navajo Nation. And so for right now, we're interested in looking at three chapters in particular. And so in DSET, if you click on some of these polygons that you see here presented for the Navajo Nation, each of these polygons are identified as chapters. And so for the one that I just clicked on is the boundaries of the Noslini chapter. What we are interested in is in looking to identify the Crystal, Mexican Springs, and Red Lake chapter areas. So if we, we can drag click and drag our mouse along to move the map around on DSET and zoom into the area of interest that we have. And so here is the Crystal chapter, Mexican Springs chapter, and the Red Lake chapter. So according to our case study, this is where we're interested at in looking at this particular burned area that experienced a wildfire in 2014 that we're interested in analyzing. So now that we've located and identified the area that we're interested in and have it at the center map, we will now go to the Make Map panel. And this is where we'll enter our and change our variables that we're interested in analyzing in this case study. We are now on step five of case study three in part one. Step five lets us know that we should change the variable to remote sensing, that we will be changing the data set to MODIS daily. You notice that there's a variety of options that we have here, different Landsat and Sentinel but we are interested in MODIS for right now. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then for our variable, we're interested in looking at the fire indices. So you can see that there are a variety of other indices, but for this example, we are interested in the burn area index. We will go ahead and leave the statistic for the processing as the mean and also leave our calculation as values. Now, the time period, so under step a, what we will now be instructed to do is change the time period selection to a custom date range, which will begin on May 14th. So change this to five and it's going to be May 10th actually. And we will be looking at the year 2014. Again, we will have an end date in 2014 as well and will end on August 10th. So now we'll go ahead and click our get map layer and wait for our process to be requested. So now what we have identified is the Asayat Lake fire here. So you can see this is a grayscale of looking at the burn area index. And you notice that this white section here is where the Asayat Lake fire occurred. We will now use one of the other DSET features that will help us in moments like this to see, to better see the burned area. And so if you click here on this feature for colors on DSET, on this um, toolbar here, you have the option to, to change your color scheme. So let's say that we want to look at a comparison of red and blue colors. Uh, you also have red and gray. Um, so let's go ahead and try red and blue to really see a distinct change. So we're interested in having our burned area show as a bright red color. So we'll go ahead and leave that as um, this color palette here and see how it helps us identify our burn scar in a way that is more um, present in the color scheme. So now you can see that our color scheme has changed for this area and that we're better able to identify the Asayat Lake fire that we've just um, calculated through using MODIS. So this is the area and this burn scar area is predominantly in the Mexican Springs chapter. And so this here brings us to a conclusion of part one for this case study. Now we're not gonna touch anything. We're gonna leave everything as is and not change anything and move into part two, where we will now uh, start to create a comparison of 
BAI and NDVI values in a time series. So what we're interested in part two is developing a time series specifically for the Asaya Lake Fire burn scar. So this area of interest in the Mexican Springs chapter boundaries. So what we will do now is switch from the make map panel to the make graph panel. And this is where we will be interested in creating our time series. Now you've noticed that once we made the switch from make map to make graph that it zoomed us out of our area of interest. There is also an option to enter and place our location here to the center map that you can use as well. But for right now, we'll go ahead and continue with just zooming into our study area and dragging it to center map. So here we are back in the Mexican Springs chapter boundary area, looking at the Syatt Lake fire. And now what we are instructed to do is to create a time series. We will first be looking at one variable for the analysis. And so we will leave the graph panel as is. We'll leave the time series calculation here as the one variable analysis. However, we are going to change the time series calculation to the summary time series. And under the region, we're interested in looking at specifically this burn scar that was a result of the Asayat Lake fire. So to look specifically at that area, what we will now do is develop a custom polygon. And so this is what step five of part two in this case study instructs us to do. When we click on the the custom polygon option, you'll notice that there are a list of instructions here to help us in developing that polygon. So you can read through that and then click to exit out of that. And so now what we're interested in is, so our, our layer on our map um, has disappeared, but you can easily just return here and click on the chapter boundaries and or whatever other layer you're interested in and it will reappear again. So now to create our custom polygon, what we're going to do is draw our shape. And so you do that by clicking this icon here, and you'll notice that now the cursor on the map is crosshairs. And so those crosshairs are going to help us more easily identify our, our polygon that we're going to create. And so now in step six, we've been instructed to draw our shape. And so we're still a little bit zoomed out. So you can zoom in a little closer and we will click and drag our map again to center the burn star area. And now our crosshairs are back, allowing us to do multiple clicks around the, the burn scar area to create a time series of data looking at the NDVI and the burned area index variables. And so here we're just clicking on the outskirts of where the fire burn scars are. And so we'll just keep clicking as many times as it takes. We're clicking on the, the left side of the mouse of your computer. And so we're gonna click to where we begin and we'll click on closing the shape by clicking the, the first point that we created. And once we do that, you notice that the shape is darkened to indicate that it has been closed, this particular polygon. And so we've done a pretty good job of outlining this burn scar area, but say for instance, you're not satisfied for the shape that you have created in the polygon you're developing for an area of interest you have, you can simply click this trash can uh, icon here to be able to restart this process of drawing your polygon again. And more explanation is given on that process in step seven. But we're okay with this example as leaving our polygon as we have created it here in this map. And we will move on to step eight to where we will now be changing the time period. So we're leaving all the other variables the same, but just changing now the time period. And we're interested in the custom day range. So we have a, lot, a number of options that you can choose, but for this exercise, we're interested in the custom day change. And you may notice that there's these question marks with a with a, back, a yellow background. What those do are there's bits and pieces of information to each of these 
features on DSET. And by clicking this question mark, it gives you a brief explanation of this parameter that is listed on the Make Graph panel. So that is just a handy piece of information to know. But back again to step eight in developing our custom day range, we're interested in creating a start and end date of about the time when the Assiat Lake fire began. And so looking at values pre and post fire. And so we'll go ahead and leave the dates as May 10th and August 10th. And we'll go ahead and leave the year range from 2000 to 2020. And so by clicking on these drop down menus, you'll be able to see all the years that are available. And so with that, we are satisfied with our one variable analysis input, and we are good to go to move on to step 10 to click on get time series. Now you'll notice that we're looking at 20 years of data. And sometimes it might create a, a processing error. And if you should happen to come across a processing error, just a reminder that you can click on this reset here, on this feature on DSET to be able to start your analysis again. But for us in this case study, we have now been moved through our process and this is what our parameters of entering in of looking at the data for this burn scar area in 2014 that we've identified as the Syed Lake fire, we're able to actually see the year that fire occurred in the data. And so as you can see here in 2014, this burn area index raised substantially uh, in comparison to the other years in this time period. And so years prior, you noticed here that the burn area index for the, the mean values that were found were extremely lower. And then also after the fire, that they were also a lot less than that year the fire occurred in 2014. So now we're able to see in the time series that we calculated using the burn area index variable looking at the pre and post fire that has been evident in 2014 and in this 20 year time period we will now add another variable to this time series to be able to help us develop a deeper analysis of this concept of wildfire and ultimately meadow restoration um, that occurs over time after these wildfires are experienced in a particular area to help us understand the meadow restoration after a wildfire. So we won't change anything in our variable one. However, we will now go up to our time series calculation to add another variable. And so this comes in the second drop down menu option. We'll go ahead and leave it as the summary of time series as is, but here we will change it to the two variable analysis. And now you'll notice that another variable has become an option. So we click on that variable two. And we're on step 13 right now in case study three. So step 13 begins to let us know that we are going to now include the NDVI data that will help us along with the DAI values understand uh, meadow restoration that occurs after wildfires. So for variable two, we're going to change our type to remote sensing. The data set that we are interested in is the Landsat option that is already the default here. So we'll go ahead and leave that as is for the surface reflectance. And for our variable, we're also interested in the default option here, which is the NDVI vegetation indice. And so for this variable, we're going to go ahead and change our computation resolution to a thousand meters. And for our time period, we want to make sure that our time periods are in the same custom day range as variable one. So for variable one, we entered May 10th as the start date, the end date, August 10th with the year range of 20, the year 2000 to the year 2020. So we'll go ahead and enter the same time period again for the variable two. So we have August 10th and we're interested in the years 2000. So you notice that the Landsat 
surface reflectant data only goes up into 2019. And so because the years will not match up, there'll be an extra point that shows up for the, the burned area index value because it goes to the year 2020. And this Landsat data for NDVI only goes to 2019. However, for this case study, we want to match it up. So we're, we'll go ahead and change this to 2019 as well, just because Landsat is only available up until 2019 for right now, just so that all of our points match up in our time series that we're creating. So now that we've checked our time periods for variable one and two being in the same time range from May 10th to August 10th, 2000 uh, to 2019, we'll go ahead and create our time series. So now our time series shows us two variables on the set right now. And so in this figure, we are looking at the burn area index and the NDVI values. These are both the mean values from 2000 to 2019. And here, this figure shows us that the Asayat Lake fire NDVI values were pretty consistent in the years prior to the wildfire. And so these NDVI values here are the line graph here. Now notice that you have the option on graph to be able to change the graph style as well. So for variable one, for our burn area index, for example, you have the option to, to change whatever style you would like. And the same again for our variable two, you could change the, uh, the structure of the way your graph is presented in this figure. So we'll just go ahead and leave uh, as the default for right now. But what this shows us is that prior to the 2014 fire, the NDVI values, much like the BAI values, were pretty consistent before the fire. But once the 2014 fire, the Asiat Lake fire occurred, you notice a drastic change in the NDVI values for this particular area. And so in the years following 2014, the burn area index values decline as shown here in the bar graph and slowly the NDVI values began to increase. And so the NDVI values are signatures of vegetation density. And so the higher NDVI value you have indicates a, a dense vegetation as opposed to a much less density of vegetation like occurred here in 2014. And so these two figures allow us to see the results of and visualize the NDVI and BAI pre and post fire values. And so now that we've seen it in this form, in this, in this figure of the graph, we are also able to look at the NDVI values of so looking directly at vegetation in a visualized form. And that's what part three of this exercise is intended to do. So for this part three, what we will now do is return to our make map availability on DSET and we will change our value, we'll leave our type value as remote sensing, but our data set value will now be changed to our Landsat 4578 surface reflectance because we are interested again in looking at our NDVI vegetation index. And so this brings us to step three of part three in this case study. We are still interested in looking at the mean and the values of this NDVI value. And we're still interested in the same custom uh, date range of the historical average distribution as well, looking at the custom date range. And so now we're going to go ahead and click on our get map layer once again, and this will be, allow us to visualize our values will show. And so right now you can see in 2014, that where our fire occurred in this region, there is a much less vegetation that is apparent. However, when we change our calculation from values from the percent to percent difference from average conditions, as I identified in step four, we will now get a different look at 
the display of the values to help us see the drastic influence that the fire had in 2014 on the NDBI values. And so this just goes to show you the type of calculation influence that can help you see exactly what you're interested in identifying in the questions you are answering, asking and answering. And so for us focusing on, in this case study, looking at the impacts of developing an analysis for this burn area, here we're able to see the burn area displayed quite clearly. So we know that 2014 was the year of the fire, However, we're also interested in looking at years prior and after the fire. And so if we change, go here to our make map panel and change our year to 2013 to the year before the fire and leave everything as is because we're interested in all the same parameters, but just at a different time period, we will be able to see the type of vegetation presence that was there in this area prior to the fire. And so before the fire, we know that there was more vegetation in the area than what was left after the fire. And so we expect to see that where in 2014 there was a large red area of negative percentage of um, vegetation. Here we see that a year before the fire, there was a lot more vegetation that existed in this area. And so you're able to see the presence of vegetation. Now, post fire, we'll bring it back to a couple of years after the fire, be able to see the regrowth that happened. So we'll change our date to 2019. Here, we're able to see the growth that has occurred in this area since the Asayat Lake fire in 2014. And this type of analysis helps us to understand the meadow restoration that comes as a result of being shown here by NDVI values using DSET. And so we're able to still see years later some of the areas of the Cheska Mountain that has been impacted by the fire. However, we're also able to see the vegetation that has returned to this area as well. And so in the materials provided for this case study, you'll actually be able to see screenshots in this part three section of this case study to see side by side the changes of the NDVI values for the percent of difference from the average values for the Asayat Lake fire. And so this, with this figure here, it brings us to the conclusion of our case study three for meadow restoration to a close.